Hello and welcome to Tap That MTG, the show where we tell you everything we know about Magic the Gathering that's probably wrong, but fun to talk about. Today, oh, I'm Leslie. I'm Shauna. <laughs> and today we are bringing you a pre-con deep dive. We're going to break it down, tell you what all the cards do, talk about what the deck is meant to do, how you can play it wisely, and then if you wait until the end, we'll offer you some suggestions for tweaks for this deck that you may want to mm -hmm. add to make it even better. And if we keep looking, I keep looking off to the, the wrong side. Because <laughs> we're together. Together forever. Yay. Yay. <laughs> um, we're in the same room this time, which is yeah. lovely. We have another um, room. No. So, Shauna, tell us all about this lovely deck. This is the Explorers of the Deep deck. This is a deck that is all about the merfolk and attacking and attacking and attacking sneaking in there for damage because merfolk mm -hmm. don't like to be blocked and yeah it is a very very fun looking deck i'm very excited to play this one i do like to play merfolk from time to time in mm -hmm. fact i've been playing it in historic quite a bit so let's just not talk about that and um yeah so this is a deck that merfolk do what they do best and these ones in particular get lots of plus one counters and hopefully that helps them get in for even more damage so we've got the first card, your commander, is Akbal of the Surging Soul. It is a merfolk scout for two, a green, and a blue, a 3-3. Three, three. That says, at the beginning of combat on your turn, each merfolk creature you control explores. So explore is where you look at the top card of your library. If it's a land, you put it in your hand. Um, or if it's not, you can choose to put it on top of your library or put it in your graveyard. And then your creature that was exploring gets a plus one counter. So it's a great way to dig through your deck and get more lands. So um, and in your each hand, cre each, each creature, each every combat explores mm -hmm. and potentially gets bigger and gets land. Oh, my God. Yes. This is going to be fast. It is. So. Um, and whenever Akbal, uh, the surge, Surging Soul, attacks, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. If you don't, you draw a card. Crazy. So you're suddenly attacking with, with this big guy all of a sudden. Yeah. Um, then the other commander that is uh, given for this deck is, I'm going to try to say it, Zola Toyuk, the Smiling Flood. He is adorable. <laughs> it's a salamander serpent that's got a big smile on his face because he's going to eat you for bread. <laughs> it's a 6-6 six, six, for a green and a blue that uh, whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, you get to put a flood counter on target land. That land is an island in addition to its other types for as long as it is a flood counter on it. At the beginning of your end step, untap each permanent you control with a counter on it. That could be bad. <laughs> crazy yeah, so even just swing. having him out on the, he'll be a total high impact yeah. when he comes and out island yeah making them islands is going to be important we'll explain later crazy. so Les is going to tell us a little bit about the breakdown of this deck yes the guts so when you look at the mana curve of this deck we see of course merfolk decks are typically very very low to the ground mana cost wise this is very true in this deck <laughs> we have four zero to one uh, 19 at 2 mana cost, 23 at 3 <laughs> mana cost, and then really above that we only have 18 other cards. Mm -hmm. So 10 at 4, 4 at 5, and 6 plus there's only 4. So really we, <laughs> 2 and, or 3 and under is where it's at, which is great. As far as color breakdown goes, um, multicolored we have 16, colorless we have 6. Most of our deck and the cards are blue, um, and of course the multicolor are also blue. Uh, so 27 and then 15 that are just green. So in this deck, we also have 36 land. Um, card types, we have 38 creatures. <laughs> it's a very creature heavy deck because the merfolk benefit each other. It's kind of like slivers. Yeah. Merfolk are like slivers. Kind of. They're the slivers that people like. <laughs> um, sorceries and instants, 15, enchantment six and artifacts five. So that is kind of the guts of the deck. And Sean's going to tell you about how we're going to break this deck down for you. Okay. So we have a little formula that we like to follow that Wizards tends to follow as well. It's a little kind of a guide when you're building your own decks. It's a great thing to use, get a good balance of things. So this one, um, this formula, we have about 15 ramp cards. Those are cards that generate mana. Uh, 15 removal, get rid of things. 13 card draw cards, 
uh, 12 high impact those are the game winning cards and then about 10 other cards that are on the theme or support your whole win condition and then about 35 lands so that can vary of course um, as you go but uh, that's generally what we try to do and what we evaluate decks on mm -hmm. So what's our first one there, Leslie? Our first section is ramp and mana generator. So as Shauna said, we like to suggest that there's 15. In this deck, there's only eight. However, <laughs> we will remind you that all the explore cards are also putting land into your hand so that you have land to yep. play. Um, so that will benefit you and you'll be able to cycle through. Plus, everything is really low to the ground. So you probably don't need 15 mana ramp generators. Eight is still a little bit low, but... Anyways, our first one is a new one, um, Nick Hanzil, uh, the current conductor for two, uh, is a two three. And whenever a creature you control explores a land or whenever a creature you control explores a land card, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. OK, so when you explore, you're looking at it. If it's a land, then you put it into your hand. And this is telling you that if you explore a land card, then you can put a land onto the battlefield. Um, and if you're exploring with all of your merfolk, then all of those get to do the same thing. <laughs> so suddenly you have all the land on your hand onto the battlefield. Uh, when a creature you ramp. control explores a non-land card, you get to put a 1-1 counter on this creature. So um, he will already get a 1-1 one, one, one counter for the explorer, and then you get an additional 1-1 one, one counter. So <laughs> he's a pretty fun card. Yep. Topography Tracker. It's another new one. It's a 2-2 two, two for 3. When it enters the battlefield to create a map token, a map token is it's an artifact that says you pay 1 and sacrifice it, and a target creature you control explores. And uh, yeah, you can only do that as a sorcery. And then if a creature you control would explore, instead it explores, then it explores again. So it does two. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> Lots of exploring going on. Yeah. So an old card, but not a bad card. Realm Walker for three. He is a shapeshifter, which means he can be any. Actually, he's not any. He's all creature types. Mm -hmm. So he is also a merfolk. Um, when he enters the battlefield, you choose a creature type. You're going to choose merfolk. And you may look at the top card of your library at any time. You can cast creature spells of the chosen type from the top of your library. So it just gives you one extra card in your hand from your top of your library. You can cast them um, and then look again and cast again and just keep going. It's just silly. Crazy. Um, Kodama's Reach is a little sorcery for three and let you search your library for up to two basic land cards reveal them put one in the battlefield tapped and the other in your hand then shuffle so it's just that typical going finding that land you need mm -hmm. and then we have the arcane signet and the soul ring in this deck mm -hmm. uh the basic staples of any commander <laughs> deck these days add one mana of any color to your commander's color identity for the arcane signet and two mana for the soul ring and then, of course, the Commander's Sphere, which is a great little artifact to have because you can tap it for any color in your Commander's color identity. And then later on, you can sacrifice it to draw a card. Mm -hmm. And then I think we only have one Signet mm -hmm. because there's only two colors in this deck. <laughs> Simic Signet, yeah. which basically you can tap one and add one of each. So. Yeah, and that's it. Yeah, That's it. We're on to card draw already. And so this deck has a lot. Um, the formula calls for 13. This deck has about 16 plus the whole explorer thing. So yeah, you've got lots going on. The first one is the little Benthic Biomancer. It's a little one, one for one merfolk that has adapt one. So you can pay two in this case and adapt is um, you get to put a one one counter on it. And in this case, whenever you one or more plus one counters gets put on this creature you get to draw a card and then you have to discard a card mm -hmm. so that could be counters from any other way as well and we have the creepy cold-eyed selkie yeah. for three um so this has hybrid mana which means you can use either the green or the blue to pay for that particular pip um she has island walk which mm. means that it can't be blocked as long as defending player controls an island so mm. in a lot of cases when you look at your commander if we look at that second commander putting flood counters on things um if you put a flood counter on a land it's also an island so this is a good way that would be a good way to give your opponents islands if they're not playing with blue um so that then this person or this little 
lovely creature can get in <laughs> without being blocked basically mm -hmm. island walk means that you can swing in it can't be blocked when it deals combat damage to a player you can draw that many cards so put lots of counters on this guy yeah then we have emperor mahal mahal the second uh for it's a three three for three you may look at the top card of your library at any time again digging through your library you may cast merfolk spells from the top of your library and whenever you cast a merfolk spell, you may pay one if you do create a 1-1 one, one blue merfolk creature token. And we were talking earlier about how all of these decks have all of the good stuff in them. So yeah. the good merfolk, <laughs> like Prime Speaker Zagana. Yeah. Um, for six, um, you get a 1-1, one, one, which, like, why would that be a good thing? Well, when they, when she, he, it, they... <laughs> When they enter the battlefield, uh, it enters the battlefield with X11 counters on it, where X is the greatest power among other creatures you control. Um, so that thing that you've been adding a whole bunch of 1-1 <laughs> counters on, basically it gets the same amount of counters. And when it enters the battlefield, you draw cards equal to its power. So <laughs> you're also going to be able to count the 1-1 counters as, <laughs> as they come on when you enter the battlefield. So mm -hmm. great. Then we have Sage of Fables. It's a 2-2 two, two, um, for 3, and each other wizard you control enters the battlefield with an additional 1-1 one, one counter on it. There's a lot of merfolk wizards in this deck. Mm -hmm. And you can pay 2 and remove a 1-1 one, one counter from a creature you control and draw a card. So you can use those 1-1 one, one counters to draw cards. I think I knew there was a lot of merfolk wizards, but I didn't realize until I really started looking at this deck just how many merfolk mm -hmm. wizards there yeah, are. There are so many. Yeah. Uh, Seafloor Oracle is also a merfolk yeah. wizard for four. It's a two, three. And um, whenever a merfolk you control deals combat damage to a player, you draw a card. That's each one. Each. All those little tokens, all that stuff. Uh, so, no, Sevillan of Sea and Sky. So three, four for one and two blue. It is a merfolk god that it has indestructible as long as you control at least two other merfolk, <laughs> of course. And whenever it attacks, you draw a card and other merfolk you control have ward one. That means it costs people one extra to um, to do anything to those creatures. Mm. One extra mana. Yeah. Tatiova, the benthic druid for five, is a 3-3. Three, three. This one has landfall. Mm -hmm. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life and you draw cards. All those extra land that you're playing are now getting you life and drawing cards. Yeah. Then we have Tashana, way, Voice of Thunder. It is a merfolk shaman for five, a green and a blue. That power and toughness are each equal to the number of cards in your hand. And you have no maximum hand size. So you probably will need that in this mm -hmm. deck. And when it enters the battlefield, you draw a card for each creature you control. What? What? <laughs> no way. Tributary <laughs> <laughs> instructor for a four. It's a four four. It has mentor. This one's a new card. Um, mentor is whenever this creature attacks, you get to put a one one counter on the target attacking creature with less power. So basically, it's gonna buff something up. And whenever a creature you control with a plus one counter on it dies, you get to draw a card. And hopefully, all your creatures will have plus one counters on them. <laughs> Another Zagana. This one is the Utopian Speaker. It's a 4-4 four, four for 4. When it enters the battlefield, if you control another creature with a plus 1 counter on it, you draw a card. Of course you will. And you can pay 6 and adapt 4. So that's putting 4 plus 1 counters onto Zagana. And um, each creature you control with a 1-1 one, one counter on it has Trample. Mm -hmm. That's going to come in really handy. Um just a note about adapt that mm. it does say if this creature has no one one counters on it then you can put yeah. four so you have to be careful not to put any one one counters on it before you adapt it yeah. um and then we just have the basic sorcery explorer you may play an additional land this turn and <laughs> you can draw a card so it has some ramp and card draw then growth spiral it's the um little instant for green and a blue that lets you draw a card you may put a land from your hand onto the battlefield mm -hmm. usually you do that on the other person's turn nice little bothy mm -hmm. inspiring call draw a card for each creature you control with a one one counter on it which will probably be lots those creatures gain indestructible until the end of turn so this nice. is a nice way to because you are playing a very heavily heavy creature deck save this one in your hand until someone does a board wipe and then um, your creatures gain indestructible and you draw a card for each of them. 
And Kindred Discovery, it is for three and two blue. It's an enchantment that says uh, you choose a creature type, so you're going to choose Merfolk, of course. Whenever a creature you control of the chosen type enters the battlefield or attacks, you draw a card. <laughs> Crazy. So this is why you need the yeah. no minimum or no maximum hand size. And then you have Thassa, God of the Sea, for three. She's a 5-5 five, five with Indestructible. If your devotion to blue is less than five, she's just an art, uh, enchantment. But as soon as you get your devotion up to past five, she becomes a creature. And then at the beginning of your upkeep, you get to scry, which is so powerful, being able to see what's coming. Um, and then for two, target creature you control can't be blocked this turn. So if you don't quite have your unblockable things out yet um she will allow you to help with that even if she's not a creature yeah you do that more than once <clears throat> then we're on to the removal section uh the formula calls for 15 the deck has about 10 again these are merfolk they're just here to get the job done um we've got the surge spanner for two two it's uh it's a two two for four and whenever it becomes tapped, you may pay two extra and if you do return target permanent to its owner's hand. Mm -hmm. So put that back. Yeah. Go away. And Any curse permanent. of swine. I don't know why they call this a curse. Because I mean <laughs> piggies are so cute. For X and Do two, you, you can piggies? exile X target creatures for each creature exiled this way. Its controller creates a two two green board creature token. I mean, who doesn't want cute piglets instead of dinosaurs? Right? Yeah, she'll start yelling at me when and I do it to her. Raven form, it's for two in a blue. It's a little sorcery that says exile target artifact or creature, and its controller gets a little birdie, a blue bird, one one bird. Mm -hmm. And you can foretell this card for one. So you foretell, you pay two to put it over in La La Land, and then you can cast it later. So it's still cost the thing, but you can just yeah. do it over two turns. Yeah. Wave goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> this one is another new one for four and return each creature without a 1-1 counter on it to its owner's hand. Nice. So it takes advantage of a board wipe that doesn't affect you, hopefully. Get in for the damage. Aetherize, it is a little instant for three and a blue. It return all attacking creatures to their owner's hand. Mm -hmm. Beast within, destroy target permanent. Its controller gets a 3-3 beast creature token. It's commit nice commit to memory yeah this is a fun card too that you get to play the instant side and then you play the sorcery side later the instant is put target spell or non-land permanent into its owner's library second from the top and then from your graveyard you can play the aftermath which is each player shuffles their oh leslie's turning it for me <laughs> shuffles their hand and graveyard into their library then draws seven cards so yeah, do that when you need to get more cards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then Quandrix Command for three. You get to choose two of these. You can either return target creature or planeswalker to its owner's hand, counter target artifact or enchantment spell, put two two one one counters on a target creature, or target player shuffles three target cards from their graveyard into their library. So whatever you need to happen can happen in that case. And I love that. Then we have Rapid... Uh, hybridization this is a little instant that says destroy target creature it can't be regenerated and that creature's controller makes a little three three green frog lizard and this is a very night like giving gifts to people <laughs> yeah. type deck You're right giving them stuff. ruinous intrusion for four is an instant you can exile target artifact or enchantment you get to put x one one counters on target creature you control or x is the mana value of the permanent exile this way <laughs> nice there's a wolfie on that one party yeah. there all right and then we're on to our high impact cards so these are cards that can help you win the game so the first one we have is Deep Root Elite. This is a little um, one one for two merfolk that says whenever another merfolk enters a battlefield under your control, you get to put a one one counter on target merfolk you control. It's just going to generate those plus one counters like crazy. Mm hmm. And then Evolution Sage for three is a three two. It has landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you're going to proliferate, which is super powerful in this deck. Mm -hmm. And then the Beast de Resistance. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This card is going to help you win the game. So, Herald of Secret Streams, a 2 3, all creatures you control with plus one counters on them can't be blocked. This mm -hmm. is how Merfolk win. 
Yeah. And this is one that when he's out, you're going to want to protect him. Yes. Like he's your commander. Yep. <laughs> Kamena, Tyrant of or Oraska, 4-3. He's a 2-4. Um, tap another target, or sorry, tap an, un, another untapped merfolk that you control. And this one, this guy can't be blocked. Uh, you can tap three merfolk you control to draw a card, or you can tap five untapped merfolk you control to put a one one counter on each merfolk mm -hmm. you control. And that's the one you want to get to. Yep. Then we have the uh, Master of the Pearl Trident, uh, 2 2 for two merfolk that says other merfolk creatures you control get plus one and have an island walk. So there we are mm -hmm. with the island walk again. All your merfolk are unblockable by um, anybody that has islands. So you're going to want. Yep. To see if you can do that. And while you're at it, why not give your merfolk plus one plus one? <laughs> it's with your mist sure. mist folk mist binder for two. Sure. And then we have the merfolk skydiver. It has flying, a one one, and when it enters the battlefield, put a one one counter on target creature you control. And you can also then sink three, a green and a blue, and proliferate mm -hmm. into, uh, yeah. What why is not? proliferate? Proliferate is where you can add a counter to whatever you want any counters it could be flood counters yeah. could be if they have counters already you just add another one yeah yeah and then merfolk so sovereign for three it also gives other merfolk creatures plus one plus one but this one also has tap target mer tap and tap target merfolk creature can't be blocked this turn and then the Marrow Rajiri, this is a 2-2. Two, two. Other Merfolk get plus one, plus one. And whenever you cast a Merfolk spell, you can tap or untap a target permanent. I like to play this one. Sometimes I untap my lands to play more Merfolk. Or you tap down their big blocker and get in for the damage and they're dead. And this is the one time you want to meet a Mimic. Metallic <laughs> Mimic for two is a 2-1. Two, Metallic Mimic enters the battlefield. You get to choose a creature type. You're going to choose Merfolk. Uh, Metallic Mimic is the chosen type in addition to its other types. And each other creature you control of the chosen type um, enters the battlefield with an additional 1-1 one, one counter. So it's automatically going to enter with a 1-1 one, one counter, which helps with all the rest of those things. Mist Dancer, it's a new card that's a 3-3 three, three for 4 and a blue that's a flying Merfolk. And other Merfolk you get, other Merfolk you control get plus 1, plus 0 and have flying. That could be bad for your opponents, and you have Encore on it for five and two blue. You can play this again from the graveyard and do it all over again, just in case you didn't get enough damage in the first just test. in <laughs> case. Yep. Yep. Voral the Hull cl Clade? Clade. Yep. For three is a one four. Um, you can pay two and tap him to double the number of each kind of counter on target artifact, creature, or land. So you can do that every turn if you need to. Just keep doubling them up. <laughs> And then, of course, we talked about the big salamander dude. So making those islands for you on the other side of the table is really nice, as mm -hmm. you saw with the island walk piece. But also, if you put them on your own lands, once you've given everybody one, then you can untap those lands. And then you yeah. have them. That's right. Because this has the untap anything with it, which is awesome for attacking and swinging and then untapping your yeah. dudes. It's just a ridiculously <laughs> high impact card. Yeah. Um, protect that one too <laughs> branching evolution for um three is an enchantment um if one or more one one counters would be put on a creature you control twice that many one one counters are put on that creature instead <laughs> and then hardened scales is in this deck as well which is again crazy just like that last one if one or more plus one counters are put on that uh, creature you control you put that many plus one um one one counters on it instead mm -hmm. so yeah <laughs> and now we're on to the support section of this. These are cards that are going to support your overall theme, maybe have other win conditions. The formula calls for 10. This deck has around 14. And we start off with Coral Helm Commander for two. And this is a fun one because it has level up, mm -hmm. level up, level up, level up. Uh, so it starts out as a 2-2, two -two, but then you can pay uh, one to put a level counter on it and level up only as a sorcery. So um, I believe you can do that as many times as you want. It doesn't say once per turn. So if you want to mm -hmm. level up all the way to level four, you can do that right away. Um, so when you do levels two and three, it gains flying and level four, it then says other merfolk you control get plus one plus one. So it's a fun little support there. Yeah. 
And there's another new card called Deep Root Historian that is for, it's a three, three for three and a green that has Merfolk and Druid cards in your graveyard have Retrace. So you may cast cards with Retrace from your graveyard by discarding a land in addition to paying their mana cost. So this is a great way to get those dead Merfolk back out again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just by discarding lands that you have extra of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And Kiora's Follower, for two, you can tap and un untap another target permanent. So that thing that you need untapped, you can tap this to untap it. Mm -hmm. Kapala, Warden of Waves. It's a 2-2 two, two for one and two blue. Um, Merfolk Wizard spells your opponent's cast that target a Merfolk you control. Costs two more to cast. So there's a little bit of protection for you. And abilities your opponents activate that target a Merfolk you control. Costs two more to activate. Mm -hmm. It's just a good little protection, dude. Yeah, lots going on there. Another new card is Merfolk Cave Diver for three. It's a two four. And uh, whenever a creature you control explores, Merfolk Cave Dweller gets plus one plus oh until the end of turn and can't be blocked this turn. Mm. So when your commander lets all Merfolk explore, he's going to get really big and then can't be blocked. <laughs> nice little support a little conditional because you don't know how many you're going to explore and singer of swift rivers it's a three two for three it has flash whenever uh, it enters the battlefield put a shield counter on another target creature you control and you may cast merfolk spells as though they had flash so that is helpful those shield counters help you mm -hmm. against damage uh, combat damage and damage period mm -hmm. So yeah, those are when you take damage, you just take the shield the counter. The shield off counter instead, comes right? off instead, yeah. Stony Book Brook Banneret for two is a 1-1. One, one. It has Island Walk, so there's that Island Walk yeah. again. And Merfolk spells and Wizard spells you cast cost one less to cast. So now that will also help. It could go in the ramp section if you want it as well. Um, it's going to make things cost a little bit less and you're going to get in for some extra damage. And we have Thieving Skydiver. It's a 2-1 for 2 that has Kicker X. X can't be 0, but um, has Flying. And when it enters a battlefield, if it was kicked, gain control of target artifact with mana value X or less. If that artifact is an equipment, attach it to a Thieving Skydiver. So that's a fun little trick you can mm -hmm. do as well. Bygone Marvels for 2 has Descend 8. And when you cast, so what does that mean? It means <laughs> when you cast this spell, if there are eight or more permanent cards in your graveyard, copy this spell twice and you can choose new targets for the copy. So what are we copying? So return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand and, and exile this. So you can only do that once, um, but basically get some stuff out of your graveyard when they inevitably do a board wipe and you can't protect everything. <laughs> yep. Uh, Ripples of Potential. This is a new card that just came out. It's an instant for two and it has pro proliferate. So adding those counters, then choose any number of permanents you control that had a counter put on them this way. Those permanents phase out. So it's a quick little, I'm going to make them bigger, but I'm going to protect them for a minute. They're going to phase out mm -hmm. and um, be safe from that board wipe. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Again, save that for when board wipes happen. Mm -hmm. Um, Swift Foot Boots is a nice little equip equipment that you can just equip to the creature to give it uh, Hexproof and Haste. Um, protect that one thing that you need to protect. Mm -hmm. Deep Root Waters. This is a great card for a merfolk deck. For Every time you play a merfolk, uh, every time you cast a merfolk, uh, you get to a little 1-1 one, one blue merfolk creature that has Hexproof by itself. Yeah. Double the merfolk, double the pleasure. <laughs> Reflection of Lit Jar is in this as well for five. It's an enchantment, and when it enters the battlefield, you get to choose a creature type, merfolk. And when you cast a spell of the chosen type, you get to copy that spell. So mm -hmm. now you're getting double the merfolk again. <laughs> and then Simic Ascendancy. This is a little win condition that's a little hard to make happen, but sometimes you can it's an enchantment for a green and a blue that um lets you put a pay one and a green and a blue and you can put a woman counter on target creature you control so it's helpful that way but this is the little thing so whenever one or more one one counters are put on a creature you control put that many growth counters on simic ascendancy and when at the beginning of your upkeep if simic ascendancy has 20 or more of those counters on it you win the game 
So this is a little sneaky thing you can be doing on the side there. And if you're proliferating, then you can add, add more counters, counters there. to it. Plus yeah. you're adding counters to other things. So yeah. it's going to get to 20 really fast. That's in this another deck, sneaky little wind counter that sneaky, might work. Sneaky, sneaky. So there's also some lands of note, but our formula says 34. This deck has about 36. So we're right <laughs> where we need to be with it. Um, a few that we wanted to mention are Alchemist Refuge, which allows you um, to cast non-land cards this turn as if they had flash. Um, Karn's Bastion allows you to proliferate. Rogue's Passage allows you to not be blocked if you don't have those things on the battlefield. And then, of course, Secluded Courtyard and Unclaimed Territory allow you to choose a creature type. And then um, you can add mana of any color to choose, to cast those creature types. So a little bit of mana fixing specifically for your Marvolk. Yeah. Then we're on to um, Leslie made up this little graph that shows the formula versus what our deck is and so you can see that this one is a little bit different than the formula that sometimes happens with these team based decks where you have uh, more it's more about the synergy and less about those game winning cards but this one is not too bad as far as lots of removal <laughs> there's lots comparison. of removal because you got yeah. protect or no there's cards. not that much removal oh there's yes only 10. it's lots of yeah, card draw lots of card draw yeah yeah, yeah. Because you want to get to those merfolk and get the game over with all before that, they kill you. That you got to kill them quickly. So that's the gist of this deck. So, yeah. We'll start us off with the tweaks. Okay. So the tweaks we have here. Um, we've got Path of Discovery, which is from the original Ixalan. That's a little enchantment that whenever you cast a... Sorry, whenever a creature enters the battlefield, it explores. So it could be those little tokens as well. So the it goes with the whole explore theme mm -hmm. there. <laughs> and if if something explores when it enters the battlefield, and then this trick this would trigger it would then explore again. So just so you know, that would stack. Yes. Um, and then shadowed caravel for two is a nice little vehicle <laughs> that whenever a creature you control explores, you get to put a one one counter on it. Um, and of course, that would be when it's crude, considered a creature with counters on it. But then when it's not crude, it's not a creature. So that would help um, <laughs> protect that yeah. creature with counters. Then there's a card called Deep Fathom Echo, which is a merfolk spirit, a four, 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 four. At the beginning of combat on your turn, this guy explores, and then you may have it become a copy of another creature you control until end of turn. So that could be really useful if it I don't know if you need something that draws cards or whatever, whatever you've got mm -hmm. there that you want. Yeah. yeah. Harbinger of Tides for two. <laughs> uh, you can cast it as though it has flash if you pay two more to cast it. So nice way to kind of just pump it in without anybody knowing. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you you may return target tapped creature and opponent controls to its owner's hand. So when it's a t when they're attacking you, that's a nice time to just say, actually, no, you chose the wrong person to attack. I'm just going to return that to your hand. And if it had counters and stuff on it, then it's going to lose all of those. Yeah. Then we have the Lord of Atlantis. This is a 2-2 creature that says all Mer merfolk get plus one plus one and have island walk so there's again your little unblockable dudes mm -hmm. um yeah if you want to go with the island walk theme yeah um, and then also on that theme, we have Aquitex Will for one. It's a little tribal sorcery merfolk. Um, you get to put a flood counter on target land. That land is an island in addition to its other types for as long as flood counter is on it. If you control a merfolk, you get to draw a card. So you get some extra draw and it's just another way to get those, those flood counters on those other people's land mm -hmm. if they don't have islands. Quicksilver Fountain. It's um, a little artifact that says the beginning of a player's upkeep. That player puts a flood counter on target non-island that he or she controls and that land is an island as long as it has a flood counter on it. So that whole idea again. At the end of turn, if all lands and player islands, remove all flood, ca flood counters from them. Mm -hmm. So... Um, so Storm Tide Leviathan is not a merfolk, but <laughs> it is a big dude that would probably be the friend of a a merfolk. Yeah. Uh, so eight mana for an eight eight, which is decent, and it has island walk of itself, and then all lands are islands in addition to their other types. So creatures without flying or island walk can't attack. So it does um, make it so that 
any of your stuff without island walk now can't attack but it also makes it so theirs can't attack mm -hmm. then we have Thassa's oracle so this might be something you might want to try because you're digging through your deck a lot um this is a little one three merfolk wizard that when it enters the battlefield look at the top x cards of your library where x is your devotion to blue and put up to one of them on top of your library and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order if x is greater than or equal to the number of cards in your library you win the game so just depending on what you're doing there you yeah. might want to try it nice little we'll see what happens. Addition, plus you get to dig through your deck and put yep. something on top yep. right Azuri Stalker of Spheres for um, four is a 3-3, three, three, not a merfolk. But uh, when it enters the battlefield, you may pay three. And if you do, you proliferate twice. So this is now getting into if you feel like supporting the proliferate. Um, when you proliferate, you also get to draw a card with her. So a nice way to kind of keep getting those yeah. counters. Uh, Sword of Truth and Justice is a little equipment that says equip creature gets plus two plus two and has protection from white and from blue. That might be helpful. And whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, put a 1-1 one, one counter on a creature you control, then proliferate. And equip is only two. So protection means that it can't be blocked or damaged or anything from a uh, white or blue source. Mm -hmm. And of course, we talk often about how a lot of these creature decks are a little bit glass cannony, which means <laughs> that they die to board wipes and die to removal very easily. So you might want to put something like Heroic Intervention in there for two permanents you control gain hexproof and indestructible until the end of turn. Um, so it's always good to have that in your hand, hopefully. And then we think thought of another card, uh, Change of Plans. It's X for X and one in a blue that says each of X target creatures you control connive, you may have any number of them phase out. So connive is where you, how is it? Can yeah. I always forget. You draw a card, then discard a card. If you discarded a non-land, you put a 1-1 counter on that creature that connived. So having them phase out just to avoid a board wipe is an idea too. So, And what's the difference between phasing out and exiling? Phasing out is they just kind of go into never never land for a little bit just for until your next turn so they're not there to block they're not there to get damage they're not there to attack and they're just it's different from an, exile because exile is gone permanently pretty much but some will exile sorry i'm trying to get at what you get to keep the counters oh yeah sorry you get to keep the counters yeah, yeah. phasing so, out they just, which is important in this deck because you don't want to exile them and they're bring just them hiding back because then you'll lose the counters once they go into exile mm -hmm. Um, so thank you so much for watching. Uh, feel free to connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We would definitely love to hear how you would tweak this deck. So please comment, um, or share with us. Um, that's it for this time. We'll see you next time. But in the meantime, tap those magic cards and have fun doing it. Bye guys. Bye everyone.